How's it going guys and welcome back to the channel for a very exciting Star Wars gaming news update. Now this video isn't a part of the bi-weekly news roundup series for Star Wars games that we normally do on the channel. But given the nature of the news in this video, I decided to just get this random news video out there because for once it's actually some good news for Star Wars games. And I don't want to wait another week before I talk about it in the bi-weekly news video. So in this video, we're going to be touching on this news regarding confirmation that there are 100% multiple Star Wars games in the pipeline at the moment, and what it can mean going forward. Also, Star Wars Squadrons just received its biggest and probably final content drop, with new Starfighters dropping into the game, so I'll briefly touch on that as well. It is actually pretty cool whether you like Squadrons or not, so I will get that out of the way nice and early, but I did want to cover it here. Now before we jump into that, for those of you who don't know, I am in the process of rebooting my second channel to a straight up Star Wars film and TV channel. I'm still working out new channel art and stuff like that, but make sure you head over to that channel and subscribe as well as this one. But with that housekeeping out of the way, let's dive into the news. So Star Wars Squadrons received its second and presumably final free update. Now this update added the B-Wing and the TIE Defender into the game. I still can't believe this actually happened. These two ships, especially the B-Wing, are such a fan favourite and so many people were frustrated that they weren't there when the game launched. So it's pretty cool that the developers more than likely picked up the pieces of what they were working on and finished off these new Starfighters. Now that's not all that was added though, there was a ton of quality of life changes and something that's actually kind of frustrating. Squadrons received custom matches and a server browser. Those were two things that fans were requesting for Battlefront 2 to get for like two years and Motive has sort of just whipped it up for Squadrons in like a month. It is kind of frustrating but you know for the sake of Squadrons players it is a pretty cool addition. And if I ever decide to host some private matches on stream with some of you guys then that option is there now. But that is pretty much it for Squadrons. There are other very minor changes. I'm not going to waste your time by going over them in this video. So as usual, I will leave the link to the update notes in the description of this video. But now let's get into the exciting stuff, what you're all here for. So this actually completely slipped me as it was a tweet made during the craziness of the past couple days with all the Star Wars announcements. So it, it just completely went through me like I did not see this happen. But a few of you guys did let me know, so a big shout out to you guys. But anyway, we did get confirmation on future Star Wars games in the pipeline from a Lucasfilm employee. Now, his name is Matt Martin. Now, I'm not overly familiar with him. I've seen his name and face around Star Wars over the years, but from all accounts, he was, or I believe still is, a member of Lucasfilm's story group. And he has other ties to Star Wars as well, and clearly some sort of correlation with Star Wars games. So this isn't from a leaker or anything, it comes from someone within Lucasfilm itself, so there's no question on reliability here. Anyway, he went on to say, It's crazy to think that even after all those Star Wars Disney Investor Day announcements, that's only a fraction of the overall Star Wars storytelling going on. We've got video games, publishing, VR, Disney Parks and more, with the High Republic beginning next month. He also did tease something else, which I will get into in a second, but this is just more confirmation that there are definitely games on the way. Not game, games. I'm sure Matt needs to be very careful when he says stuff like this, given the secretive nature on future Star Wars content in any media. So he wouldn't be throwing an S on the end of games otherwise, and I don't know if this is just the way that it's worded, but maybe these games could be tied to the High Republic. As all things with the High Republic, according to this tweet, are kicking off next month. Now, the High Republic is going to introduce a ton of new Star Wars content, as it's set 200 years before the events of the Skywalker Saga. This is going to be in an era that seems to be pretty Jedi heavy, so that would form the basis for some amazing Star Wars games right there. Maybe even relaunching the Battlefront franchise eventually with High Republic content. Like, I don't know. Now, someone actually did respond to this tweet highlighting the fact that he did say games, and Matt actually went and replied to that with a further tease. This part definitely got me really excited. This guy replied saying, video games? Obviously, he was quite taken back by the fact that Matt actually mentioned it. And Matt responded saying, strap in, buddy. 
So a really, really interesting little tease. He gave nothing away, but he's definitely drawn some excitement there at the same time. So it's really nice to see that 2020 is closing out with some light at the end of the tunnel for Star Wars games. Between Lucasfilm posting a small tease about Star Wars games in 2021, a week or so ago, and now Matt, who like I said, is involved in Lucasfilm's story group, coming out shortly after that, reaffirming that point made by Lucasfilm. And then he goes and teases stuff saying strap in, making it sound like there's some big and exciting stuff on the way. It sounds to me like we have some stuff going on and a lot to look forward to and things are going to be heating up really damn soon from the looks of it. Now a lot of people are wondering why there was no announcements of video games with the Disney Investors Day and I was myself as well considering we've had two teasers at multiple Star Wars games coming up in the next couple years but nothing was said. Well, I think all eyes can now look to EA Play in 2021. This event normally takes place at around June every year, so 2021 will be no exception. So I think this is where we'll finally see all of these announcements. They could possibly come earlier. I must say that though, they could also come later at Gamescom in I think August of 2021. But I think it's almost a certainty that we are going to be seeing some stuff for Star Wars games at EA Play next year. That's my firm belief. Like if I was a betting man, I'd be putting a lot of money on it. I just think that it's just a matter of how many games we are going to see. I think Fallen Order sequel will definitely get its reveal at EA Play. I think that's sort of just locked in without being official. But there could definitely be more, and considering we've now had two teasers that tease more than just one Star Wars game coming up in the near future, and the way that Matt teased further saying strap in, implying that there's actually some really serious stuff on the way, I like our chances, which is a big relief. Now, the fact that Matt is alluding to some serious stuff going on for Star Wars games, I think this kind of plays into the whole doubling down on Star Wars games statement that EA CEO made about four or five months ago. A lot of people were actually starting to doubt that EA were going to actually double down on Star Wars games like they said, but I think given these sort of teasers and nods to the future, I think it's safe to say that EA probably will be following through with the doubling down thing. And I think the High Republic could possibly be playing a part in that doubling down. The High Republic seems to be a bit of a love child of Disney's Star Wars at the moment, and they're going to want to make it as popular as possible. And what better way to do that than release content for it across all forms of media, films, books, shows, and of course, video games. So I think the future is looking brighter every single day for Star Wars games, and I can't wait to see how all of this pans out. Some good news for once, guys. But, you know, let me know your thoughts on all of it in the comments below. I'm really interested to see what all of you guys have to say about this. So yeah, lots of good news to come out of today. Thankfully, things seem to be heading in a better direction when it comes to the future of Star Wars games. Seems like there's going to be lots of stuff to look out for in 2021. I tell you what, man, if Star Wars games explode in the next couple years and EA finish out their time with Star Wars license with an absolute bang, between the games and the crazy films and Star Wars shows we're going to be seeing, the next few years could be the best years for Star Wars fans in a long, long time. Which also does remind me, be sure to go drop a sub on my second channel as we're going to be doing theories, reactions, rankings, live watch parties, reviews on all Star Wars stuff. So be sure to check that out. And if you did enjoy this video, then it would be greatly appreciated if you could drop a like and subscribe to this channel if you're new for all things Star Wars gaming. And make sure you keep an eye out on this channel over the next few days as I will be dropping a huge video that I've been working on for a long time on the history of cancelled Star Wars games. And it's a tearjerker. But that is going to do it for me today. Thanks for watching and have a good one.